Hope you guys are all doing well and welcome back to the channel. If you guys are new here, my name is Ishan. I am a photographer and content creator from Toronto. And this is my little space of the internet where I share stuff with you. So getting into today's video, I got a package that I've been waiting for and I am super, super excited to open and share with you what's inside. Um, you guys can see the box is from Godox. Some of my favorite people out there and they have sent over their new Godox Lux Master and their new wireless trigger. And I can't tell you how excited I am for both of those. So we're gonna do a little unboxing and I'm gonna run over every little detail about this flash and the trigger. We're gonna try it on a couple different cameras to show you guys the functionality. We'll head down to the studio afterwards and we'll do a little self portraits and I'll show you guys the abilities of this flash and how you can incorporate it into your workflow and have some fun with it. So without further ado, let's unbox this. This I think takes the Godox Lux uh, retro series flashes to like a whole nother level. So I can't wait to show you guys what's in here. So first let's see what they sent over. It's quite a big box. Some packing material in here. Okay. So here we have it. So this is the new Godox Lux Master. And as the name suggests, it has everything a master flash would. <laughs> and it is a design, as you guys know, first off, all the retro series flashes um, are designed off of old flashes. They take similar, um, they, 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 they take a general design choice from those flashes, but they include all the modern uh, technologies, the rechargeable batteries, wireless controls, you name it, they have it. And of course, repairability, you can get these things repaired and serviced still. Um, you're getting brand new flash bulbs in them, modern flash bulbs, so you don't have to throw away um, all their bulbs that you use one at a time. Although it's very fun, sometimes having something like this is a little more convenient, especially if you're on the go and constantly moving. So that's one that's in the box. So we also got the new Godox X3. This is Godox's new wireless trigger. This is the N version for Nikon. Uh, of course it supports TTL and I'll show you guys how that works, but this thing, I'm excited. I'm very excited for this. You know, all my lights are Godox lights, um, all my studio strobes. So this is something I'm very much looking forward to. It's uh, so tiny, it's got a touch screen. Oh, I can't wait to show you guys this. So let's pop over to the table, let's unbox these, and we'll go over all the details. So let's start with the unboxing for the Godox Lux Master. As you guys can see from the photo on the box, this thing is absolutely beautiful. It's got a nice LED screen on the back. So let's see what's inside. So it comes in this beautiful packaging, it says Lux Master. And inside we have, ooh, this is a really, really cool way to do it. They got this nice orange accent and this is it, wow. This thing, I mean, it looks like a lightsaber. If you guys know, the original lightsabers were actually made um, from Graflex uh, flashes. So I'm sure this takes a lot of inspiration from that style, but this is the flash. Let's see what else comes in the box before we start removing the stickers. So inside here we have, let's see. Looks like we have a little pouch. You all know I like my little pouches. And this is a really nice one. So it's got, ooh, it's got two pockets in there. So I guess one pocket has a little Velcro over here and you can put your accessories in there. And then of course a large one will store the flash. And this is really nice, nice thick uh, kind of velvety material, which I'm very impressed by. This is really nice. Good job, Godox. So let's just put that off to the side. We also got on the bottom here, 
Oh, it's underneath this, so let's see. Let's see what's in here first, I guess. Okay, so it looks like we got a PC sync cable. Right over here, we got a USB-C to USB-A. We got the manual right in here. So if you need any information, it's in the manual. And we got one more thing in here. Ah, yes, so this is the reflector dish. So we'll put that off to the side. Let's put these in here. We don't need the cables now. And the last thing is the bottom bracket. And this is what's gonna let you mount your flash to the bottom of your camera uh, to use. So let's get this stuff out of the way. Love the packaging. Let's put this off to the side and let's unwrap the flash. Let's see, where should we start? That is shiny. Kind of don't want to get my fingerprints on it. So it looks like it has this leather finish on the bottom where the grip is, which is very nice. I'm going to try not to touch the chrome too much, but that's amazing. And then you have a little cover here for your bulb. So there's a little release pin on the side over here. You push this down and that just pops right out. So there's your flash bulb. So don't lose this if you wanna use this later on as a little protective cover. That's nice to have. Over here, we have our reflector dish. Let's open this up. And this is very similar to how the Godox Lux Senior works. So let's install that. So it looks like it's a variation of the Godox mounts that they have on all their flashes. They're like, it's like a micro Bowens mount almost. There we go, so just fan these out carefully. Just wanna make sure they're all released. Especially if it's the first time that you're opening this, just make sure that there are no things doubling up. And then there's a little hook right over here, which you just pull on and it just locks into place like that. And now you have your reflector dish open. And of course, to release the flash, there's a big red button, you push that in and your flash bulb pops out and now you're ready to operate. Additionally, you have your bracket right over here. And on the bottom, you do get a little thread so you don't have to use a bracket you can mount this directly on um, a tripod or a light stand but they do include this bracket it's got a little arrow pointing to the direction you should set this up in so you have this on your left side of your camera and that just screws right in so we'll do that real quick perfect so now you have the bracket set up. You also have an additional lock over here, which unscrews. And you can fold this up if you want to store it, or you have it open. You can lock this in place. Or if you need to attach something to it, there you go so that just locks that in and then you have your standard tripod mount right over here which your camera will go on to so let's put a camera on it right now i have my nikon d850 right over here this is my workhorse i gotta get this tripod plate off of it and i'll show you guys the cool thing about this bracket that they include so normally if you have a bracket like this, you'd need to attach an additional tripod plate to the bottom to attach your camera back onto the tripod. But this bracket actually, if you can see from this angle, has a little dovetail. 
and that'll perfectly match up with a standard Arca Swiss. So whether you're mounting this to your camera and then the tripod or vice versa, you have that option available right off the bat. So you don't have to add an additional plate to this. So let's put this on here. This just screws right into the bottom. Perfect. And then you can use a little coin just to make sure nice and tight, just so it doesn't tip over. And there you have it. So that's how you mount it onto the camera. Now to actually use it, I'm just gonna close this so I can freely move this around real quick. And that just collapses down and the bulb goes right in there for safety. So you have a couple options. So your first option is to use this PC sync cable that's included in the box. And right on the bottom, you have a USB-C charge port. And right beside it, you have that 2.5 mil socket to attach your PC sync cable. So if you have cameras, like this old Nikon FM2, um, you can just attach the PC sync cable right in the front over here and attach the tripod plate to the bottom and now your flash is ready to go. Or the other option, which makes this thing really cool, is to use a wireless trigger. And we're gonna get into this in a little bit, but yes, this thing is compatible with the Godox wireless system so it has full TTL metering. It has the option to use a wireless trigger so you don't have to always rely on that PC sync cord so you can use this off camera. So why don't we turn this on and let me give you guys a little more detail on the flash. So to turn it on, you're gonna hold down this power button right over here and you're gonna rotate this wheel all the way around and that's how you turn it on, and it's that simple. So this flash is rated at a GN rating of 25, and so that's a fairly bright flash. And it has a built-in uh, lithium battery, which is 2,980 milliamps. So that'll give you quite a bit of juice. And the charging is by USB-C, and that charges at five volts, two amps. So it doesn't have a fast charger, but that's okay because you want these things to charge fast so the batteries don't degrade over time. Of course, the flash output is full all the way down to 1 256 uh, power, which is the lowest it'll go. It has a auto mode as well, if that's something that you really, really need to use. And that, of course, defaults to a range of F2.8 at ISO 100, and then you'll gauge everything else by distance. Now it does have wireless functionality. So stuff like the Godox X3 or their X-Pro2 triggers will all trigger this flash all the way back to their original wireless triggering. And of course you have your PC sync cord option there. So why don't we run through the flash menu real quick and see what else is in there. So right off the bat, you have your manual mode over here. And of course this is a, I forgot to tell you guys, this is a touch screen. So, um, if you don't want to use the dials, you can just navigate this all by touch. So you have over here is your regular manual menu. So if you just tap on the 256, that'll be your flash power. And you can kind of just scroll through right over here to select the flash power that you want. And then you have your point settings. So you can go all the way from 0.9 to 0.1 if you want to fine tune that perfectly. And then you just swipe to go back. Now, if you swipe down, you have a mode and we'll see what's in there. So we have our manual mode, which is regular. You have multi, you have auto if you want to use with like a film camera. If you don't want to use a uh, full manual mode, auto is great for that. And so let's say we want to go into that. You click OK and you can select what kind of reflector you want to use. Now, they do have additional modifiers that fit this mount that you can purchase separately. I don't have any here to show you, but hopefully in a future video, maybe we can uh, run through those. But you'd basically go in here and select your modifier, whether it's a their softbox or the little, little bulb reflector. Um, but since we have just a standard, we'll just keep it at that, swipe back. And here you have your auto settings. 
um, you can set your ISO. So if you're shooting, let's say, Portra 400, let's see, let's set it at Portra 400, then your flash output would be an equivalent of 5.6 at 400. So let's see, we swipe back. So this will be the setting that you would set your camera to. So you'd set it at 5.6 at ISO 400, and then your equivalent uh, flash sync speed. Of course, keep it in the distance that these are rated in um, to get the best results. So other modes in here, you have your TTL mode, which is something that everybody's been wanting. And especially to find this in a retro looking flash is pretty, pretty cool. Um, you will need a TTL trigger for this and a camera that is compatible with TTL like the Nikon D850. So more for the digital cameras, um, that's what this will be for. There are film cameras that do TTL metering you just have to find the right trigger, for example, the Nikon trigger, that'll be compatible with that and it should work perfectly fine. So let's see what else is in here. We have the wireless, which we will unbox this first and then we'll set that up. You also have a settings menu over here. Um, you know, you have your sleep, you have your reflector types, you have a power button, um, you have the sound if you want it to beep every time it flashes or not. Um, you have your steps, so if you want to change your settings by third of stops, all that stuff. You have a brightness menu over here, so if you want to adjust how bright your screen is, it doesn't want to bother you. And you have some other additional wireless and settings if you want to restore it back to normal. But that's about it. So why don't we pop this back into manual mode, we'll leave it there. Let's turn off the flash, you just press and hold, it turns off by itself. Let's clean this up, let's unbox this wireless trigger and show you guys how this pairs together. So this is the Godox X3N for Nikon. This is Godox's new TTL wireless trigger. This is something I'm extremely excited about. Look how tiny this is. So this is the little carrying case that's included, which is amazing, because I think this is the first time they've included a carrying case with it. Those contacts, uh, you don't want to get that damaged. So there's a carrying case. And let's see, additionally you have, you have a charging cable right over here. So it's a USB-C charging cable. And looks like you got a little bit of paperwork, some manuals in there. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. Look at that. It almost uh, reminds me of a Apple Watch, huh? That thing is tiny, tiny. Wow. I am extremely impressed. From where Godox started out with their first triggers to where we are now, this thing is very impressive. So turn it on, there's a power button right here on the side. Just give it a press and a hold. And it turns on just like that. And now you are ready to roll. That is absolutely, this screen is beautiful. If you guys can see that, that is extremely bright. Let's see, you can go into a light. Oh beautiful touch screen, or you can use this little dial on the side, and then you press in to select. So you do still have a tactile button if you choose to use that. Um, of course, if you don't want to, you can just use the touch screen. And then additionally to the menu button and the scroll button, there's also a flash test button right over here for convenience. On the back over here, you also have a USB-C charging port. And again, I've mentioned this in a bunch of my videos, Anything with USB-C is automatically a game changer for me, just to laterally have the same cable across the board with all the devices and products that I use. And on the bottom over here, you have your flash contacts. This one's laid out for a Nikon, uh, but the they all there's also a Canon, Fuji, Sony one available, so you can just choose as you go based on your device. Uh, this button over here on the back activates this little pin up at the front and that just retracts it so you can install it on your camera. So why don't we take a look and see how it looks on my Nikon. And all you have to do is press this button, hold it down, and that'll deactivate the lock, and this just slides right in, and there you go. And now you have it mounted to the camera. And look at that, look how little space this takes up. The interface is nice and clean. Uh, you have all your devices you can manage off of this. And also for a size comparison, I have here 
my X Pro N. This is the first version. Um, it's seen better days, but I've had it for quite a long time and it's served me well. But look how far we've come in the technology. So let me take this off. Look at the size difference. The fact that this is USB chargeable, I don't have to throw in batteries in here. It's touch screen. I can manage all my devices through it. Same as my X Pro, but just so much quicker, so much easier. And it has all the same TTL uh, technology available. So I got nothing to worry about in that regard. So now why don't I show you how to connect it to the Godox Lux Master. So let's grab the flash over here. So we'll turn this on. Get that going. We'll just pop the bulb out as well. So to connect to your X3 trigger, all you're going to do is swipe down over here and you'll just swipe over, go to the wireless and this is going to show you your groups and your channel IDs. Uh, so let's see. So we're on channel 21. So we'll head over to our trigger and looks like we are currently in the same setting. We're on 21 and we will make sure this is group A to match this one and that'll be our first device. So let's just swipe back and give it a little test. So now you can see we have the same power settings on the uh, on the flash and on the camera. So if you want to change your settings, all you're going to do is go into this menu. So this will show your device list over here. So if you have multiple flashes, you'll be able to select uh, flash A, B or C. And when you want to change a setting, all you're going to do is tap on it and then you can swipe and change the settings accordingly. And if you hit the little power tester on the side, you can see the flash goes off. So one of my favorite parts about this trigger is, as you can see, we're on 125th power right now. If in the main menu, I just want to do a quick adjustment, I don't even have to go into the sub menu. I can just tap and hold and I can swipe to change the settings right there. Say we want to go one th one thirty second of power. And there you have it. And now wirelessly, your flash is ready to roll. And then you can install this. You can use this um, off camera. You can mount it to your camera if you choose. Uh, but you have the freedom of mounting this to wherever you want. And it'll all connect wirelessly. You can adjust the settings over here. And if you want to change the mode of the Lux Master, it's super simple. You're going to select your channel that that's in, your group. And all you're going to do is hit the little M over here and it'll automatically change that to TTL mode. And now you have full, full TTL compatibility and you don't really have to think if you want to have an exposure compensation, let's say you want to go plus one, all you're going to do is just increase that. And now you got additional power or if you want to set it to minus one, it'll automatically figure all that out for you. You don't have to think you can just shoot. And that's what makes this system so fun to use. So why don't we take this downstairs to the studio? I'll show you guys a couple ways to use this flash. All right, guys, so we're downstairs in the studio. Um, I got my tripod here and I got my D850 with a 50 mil lens. We got the Godox X3 trigger and we have the Godox Lux Master. So I'm going to show you guys how to kind of use this in like the most basic settings and then we'll do a little bit more of an advanced lighting setup. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mount my camera to this bracket using the screws down here. So we're just going to thread that in there. Perfect. Make sure that's on nice and tight. Now the benefit of attaching your camera to this bracket is that it has a built-in Arca Swiss mount. So it's compatible with pretty much any Arca Swiss tripods uh, like this Leo Photo tripod right over here. Perfect. So now that we have our camera mounted, it's going to be very easy to take some pictures. So why don't we set this in a self timer mode? We'll do that. And what I'm going to do is make sure that my shutter speed is the sync speed of this camera. And then we'll set our ISO and our aperture. And we'll let the flash do the rest. So on the trigger over here, I have it set to TTL and we're just going to leave it at neutral zero, no exposure compensation. And we'll set this up maybe right over here. 
and we'll take a little portrait. So let's see. We'll lock that up. And we'll go about an arm's length away. I think that's about. There we go. And make sure our focus is on. And we'll let the self timer go. Perfect. So let's see how that came out. That was very close. So maybe we'll switch over to the 24 mil lens, but I don't mind this at all. Focus is a little off, Could probably go a little higher. And we'll just take one more. Perfect. Get into position. And let's see how this TTL handles this lighting setup. Awesome. Perfect. So as you guys can see, the metering in this system is second to none. So if you're out, you know, you're shooting an event uh, and you want to have that hard flash look, this is going to be a great option uh, paired with the wireless trigger just because it's going to be extremely easy to use. You don't have to do any thinking. You're just out there trying to capture the moment. And at the end of the day, that's the job that you're there to do. So this is going to be a great tool to have in your arsenal. So if you want to get more use out of this flash and this entire system, this is going to be a great option for you. Now to remove the flash, you don't have to unclip the camera. Just grab your coin and unscrew it from the bottom and the flash comes out separately than the camera. So you don't have to worry about uh, taking the camera off your tripod. So this just unscrews. Perfect. So now you have your flash and I'll just show you guys. If you just set your camera up and with the X3 trigger, you can still wirelessly trigger your flash still in TTL mode. So let's grab a light stand. So we got one right over here and on the bottom of your Lux Master, you have a little thread and that'll just mount right onto your light stand or you can mount it to a tripod. It's up to your personal preference. But now we have the ability to set this light up any which way we want. If you want to have a overhead light, we can have that. So let's set that up. And just to show you guys the results a little better, what we'll do is we'll swap out the 50. Get that out of here. I'm only one person, so it's a little tricky sometimes but we'll swap it out for the 24 mil. We will set up our flash and we'll increase, we'll give it exposure compensation of plus three. And now what we can do, is so let's say we wanna have this light over here. We'll focus. And just like that, now we have a off camera flash. Let's take a look at how that photo came out. And boom, just like that, we've created a completely different look than what we started with. One was a direct front facing flash that kind of lit up our entire environment. This, we had the flash off to the side and you can play around with this. Let's say you only want to have it on one side. Again, you have that flexibility. We'll just even that out. And if you just wanted to have a light on one side of your subject, and then you want to create an even more dramatic effect, this is what we can do. And look at that. So we've created an entirely different look, extremely hard light on one side. You can even change it up. You can have this light go overhead over your subject, show you what that looks like as well. Let's say you want to have it a almost, uh, almost like a beauty dish style. So we'll have it right over top of the camera right over here. And then we'll bring this up just a bit. And then we'll give it a go. So approximately three feet. And check this out. And just like that, we have now yet again created a fourth lighting setup. And it's honestly that simple. Having TTL functionality, especially in a controlled studio environment, it just makes everything easier. You get creative. 
you know, you still have the option to go fully manual if there's a very specific lighting setup that you want to create. But if you just wanna have fun, shoot with your friends, if you, if you wanna get experimental, shoot with a client or something, this is gonna have endless possibilities. And the ability to just take this off, right? It just unscrews and you know, you can give it to an assistant. You can honestly be using this handheld if you're out with, at a party, you have your camera in one hand, you can just hold this above, create multiple different angles, different lighting effects. So it's gonna be a great tool for that. One more thing I wanted to mention that I didn't mention before, the head of the Godox actually tilts. So as you guys can see, the head over here, it has a little tilt functionality. So it can go all the way up, reflect the light straight up, or you, know, you can have it on a little bit of an angle. So if you do wanna use this as a bounce flash, or you can't necessarily get it in the right position, you have the option. So if you can't get it into the right position, you have the option to tilt this head to get it to exactly where you need, or if you wanna just reflect it off the ceiling to take some nice, nice soft lighting. But yeah, lots of functionality in this thing. I'm loving it. This is an extremely fun flash to use. I'm excited to try it on, on all my cameras. I hope you guys enjoyed this little demo um, stay tuned on my Instagram. I'm gonna have a bunch more photos and samples with this flash. But if you guys have any questions in regards to the flash or the trigger, feel free to send me a message, either drop a comment on the video or send me a DM on Instagram. It's a little easier for me to respond to you there. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys found it educational and informative. I wanna say a huge shout out to Godox and the whole team there for sending these over for me to review and share with you all. If you guys are interested in purchasing one of these, um, I'll leave any relevant links down in the description below. Uh, some of them may or may not be affiliate links, so if you do use them, uh, know that you are helping out the channel. Uh, make sure to follow me on Instagram. If you guys have any questions, the best place to send me a DM. And I hope you guys enjoyed, and I hope you guys take care, and I'll see you guys on the next one.